Hello, my name's Navit. Thank you for joining me here today. I'm really happy to be here and to be a part of such an amazing conference for conscious parents. I am a CBT therapist and a coach for parents and I'm the founder of Conscious and Calm where I specialise in helping busy conscious parents to find ways of taking care of their own emotional and mental wellbeing needs to help them to feel happier and less stressed and more fulfilled so that they can meet the demands of being a parent so they can give their children what they want to because this is what strengthens our connection with our children and helps them to feel happier and more relaxed and become more confident and resilient too. Today I'm going to talk about some very practical strategies that we can use, just one of the ways that we can put some steps into practice that will help to take care of ourselves, help to give us what we need so that we can be the parent that we want to. If you're listening to this today, then I'm guessing that something in you knows that something has to change, that you need to find more balance or find a way to do more for yourself or give yourself what you need to. So. Over the next 20 minutes, I'm going to talk to you about three steps that will help us to feel less stressed and less overwhelmed, feel happier and more fulfilled, and to feel more balanced. So it will give us the opportunity to give ourselves what we need and also give our children what we want to give them so that we can be the parent that we want to be. These steps, they're based on a CBT treatment. So these, these steps have been proven to help people to feel happier and improve their quality of life in just a, few, just a few weeks. So these steps really do work when we put them into practice. And for anybody who doesn't know what CBT is, it stands for Cognitive Behaviour Therapy. And it's a type of talking therapy where we help people to overcome emotional problems by recognising and also changing unhelpful patterns of thinking and unhelpful patterns of behaviour that maintain those problems. CBT is evidence-based and that means that the strategies have been proven to change in the ways that they have set out to. So by doing these steps they can help us to feel more balanced because we get a chance to do more of the things that give us a sense of achievement and pleasure and less of the things that don't. They help us to feel happier because we'll have more of a chance to do things that give us a sense of achievement and pleasure. Um, they can help us to be more present with our children when we choose to be because we would have found time to do that. And there'll be less times when we're multitasking. So the stresses of parenting are easier to manage. And you might find that when you put these steps into practice that you feel better about yourself as well because you'll be parenting in the way that you want to parent and you'll be more closely aligned with living the life that you want to be living. We live in a very hectic, fast-paced world. We work very long hours, often juggling responsibilities between home and work. We can be on the go from first thing in the morning to last thing at night, working through never-ending to-do lists. And this can be very stressful for a lot of us. I've got a four-year-old daughter and I also run two busy businesses and I don't have family living close by. And if I don't do these things to look after myself, if I don't find time for myself to recharge, then life can become very difficult. I'm always on the back foot. Um, it feels stressful and overwhelming and it's not as enjoyable or as fun. And I don't have the time that I want to give to my daughter and I feel guilty about that. And she notices too and she might act differently. She might have more tantrums or shout more or moan more. And when I'm stressed and overwhelmed, I don't have the patience to respond to her in the way that I'd like to. But when I follow these steps, these three steps, life flows more smoothly. I still have the same responsibilities, I still have as much to do, I'm still just as busy, but life flows more smoothly and I feel more balanced and it's not as overwhelming or as stressful and because of that, life is more enjoyable and being a parent is more enjoyable. 
So today we're really talking about one way that we can take care of our own emotional well-being needs. Like I said, it's based on a CBT treatment. This is just an insight. So we've only got 20 minutes today. So it's just an introduction to give you an idea of a framework that you can use to help yourself to find a way of balancing your busy life so you can give yourself what you need which will allow you to be the parent that you want to be. So we can get started. So step one is finding some time to be able to reflect on what is really important to you. So here we're thinking about what are your core values. And for the purpose of today, we're going to just think about what is one core value that you hold. So this might be something like a quality that you would like to possess or a way that you would like to live your life or a way that you'd like to interact with other people or the world around you. So we're really thinking about what is really important to me. That might be very different to what is important to my partner or my next door neighbour or my friends or my family or society as a whole. But really here, the important point is having a think and having that space to reflect on what is really important to me. When we live in line with our values, we get an opportunity to do more of the things that give us, um, that help us to feel happy and fulfilled. And when we don't live in line with our values, that's when life can feel harder, where it can affect our mood, it can make life feel stressful and overwhelming, and it's not as enjoyable. So when also when we're thinking about our values, it's it's most clear to try and frame them in terms of to be statements. And it's really important to find the words because when we can label, when we can really identify what is important to us, it helps us to be able to live in line with that. It helps to make that idea, that thought into our reality. So I can give you some examples of of some values. And we can We can think about our values in lots of different areas of life, but also there are, we all hold so many values. But like I said, for the purposes of today, we're just going to focus on one value. So some examples might be in the area of our relationships. For example, to be a more patient parent or to be a more, to be a nurturing parent, to be a loving parent, to be a kind parent. Again, we're thinking about what is it that really, really resonates with with me, what's important to me. Or you might have other relationship values, for example, to be a loyal friend or to be a supportive partner. So you could choose any relationship really and think about what value is important to you in that relationship, focusing on one value at a time. Other areas of life that you might want to focus on are um, your career or education. So remember, we need to fulfill our own needs in all of these areas. It's not just about giving our children what we want to. It's about giving us what we need to so that we can take care of our children in the way that we want to. So if it's important to you to um, progress in your career or education, you might have a value around um, to be a leader in my field, to be a reliable employee, Thinking again about things that are important to you. A different life area we can think about is our home and the responsibilities that we hold. And um, so one example might be to be an active member of the the local sports club or to be an active member of the church if you go to church or to be on the committee of um, to be involved in the school that my children go to. So really thinking about what is it that is important to you in terms of the home and your responsibilities. Another life area you might want to think about is hobbies and fun. So thinking about what qualities or characteristics, what values do you hold in about how you want to be in that area of your life? So some examples might be to be playful 
or to be creative. And again, it's about thinking about what's important to you. What is it in terms of your, <clears throat> excuse me, in terms of your hobbies and fun? What is important to you? And the last area that we can think about is our physical, emotional and spiritual well-being or spiritual health. So thinking about in that area of life, what is important to me? How do I want to live my life? How do I want to interact with other people or, or the world? So <clears throat> some examples might be to, to be kind to myself, to be compassionate to myself, or to be physically healthy, or um, to be connected to nature. So really when we're thinking about this first step, it's taking that time, it doesn't need to be too long, but just thinking about what is it? What is it that I want? What is really important to me? Because if we want to change the way that we feel, if we want to change the way that we see the world, it really is important to think about what it is we really want. So, step two. Once you've got an idea of one of the values that you hold, you can start thinking about how you can go about aligning your life with that, how you can make that into your reality. And we do that by thinking about actions and activities. So actions and activities are things that we do, the way that we spend our time, the things that we go out of the house, do the things that we do in the house, all of the things that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. And when we're thinking about our actions and activities, we want to think about what can I do, what actions or activities can I do that will help me live in line with the value that I identified. So I can give you some examples. Say that I had a value to um, be a caring mother. Say so that was my value. I would now have the chance to think about what can I do on a day-to-day -day basis or week-to-week -week basis or even a month-to-month -month basis that will help me live in line with my value of being a caring parent. So I might um, choose some activities like spending one-on-one -on -one time with my children three times a week. So having uninterrupted one-on-one -on -one time with my children three times a week. Or um, to have dinner as a family every weekday. Or to give my um, to give my children a ten minute time warning when we're going to when we're going to have to go out to give them that chance to gradually stop what they're doing and get ready to go out if that's something that's really important to them. Or if um, if you've got a value around being spiritually connected, you might think about some activities that will help you align with that value. For example, to, um, to meditate three mornings a week for 10 minutes, or to make sure that I get out into nature at least once a week. So with this step, with step number two, we're really thinking about what specific actions and activities could I do that will help me to live in line with my value, that will help me to live in line with the things that are actually really important to me. So just a couple of notes on, um, on thinking about actions and activities. We wanna make sure that they're very specific and that they're observable and measurable so that they are things that we do rather than ch trying to change the way that we feel. We wanna think about what specifically can I do? How often would I wanna do that? with who, where, when, those sorts of things. And the more specific you can be thinking about the actions and activities that will help you live in line with your values, the more likely it is for that to become your reality. It's also really important that the actions and activities that you choose are achievable. So for example, say you had a bigger goal like um, to get fit, and say, you know, you're not quite there yet, it might be more reasonable to think about specific actions and activities like to go for a run three times a week or to go for a 30 minute run three times a week. So breaking that bigger goal down into smaller steps means that in our busy lives, it's more achievable 
less overwhelming and it's more likely to happen. And then that creates a powerful cycle of reinforcement where the things that we do for us that are beneficial for us are more likely to happen again in the future. And the other thing we want to think about when we're thinking about activities and actions is thinking about what we are going to do, not what we're going to try and avoid. So it's very tempting to think, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to be eating junk food. I don't want to be shouting at my kids. I don't want to be late all the time. But when we're trying to create change, it's really helpful to think about what I can do. So, for example, if I had a value around um, being a patient parent, rather than choosing an activity around not shouting to my not shouting at my children when they don't listen to me, we can think about what we do want to do. So, for example, saying clearly what I need from my children and giving them time to respond before I ask them again. So making sure that our actions and activities are very specific, very concrete, and that helps us, um, it helps us, us more easily put those into practice. And again, the last thing I want to think about is the actions and activities that are important for you. So again, we're thinking about what works for me, not what works for my partner, my neighbours, my friends, my family or society, society as a whole. The more specific you can be and the more specific to you that you can be, the more likely it is that you're going to connect what it is that you really need. So, step three. So time for step three. Step three is scheduling. So have you ever heard of the the saying, nothing changes if nothing changes? It's, It's very true. If we want to change the way that we feel or the way that we think about things we've got to change the things that we do it's very easy to plan and have the best intentions to do something differently but the end of the week the end of the day the end of the week the end of the month comes and we haven't got around to doing it it's so easy to prioritize what feels most pressing in the moment rather than the things that are actually going to be most beneficial for us in the long term so The problem with that is that when we continually prioritise the things that seem most pressing in the moment rather than the things that we need in the long time, that's when life can become very difficult. It can feel very challenging, very overwhelming, very stressful, and we don't get what we need. We don't get the the sense of enjoyment and pleasure that we need on a day-to-day basis. So it's really important to keep in mind that the way that we create change in our life, the way that we can really benefit from these steps is not just by thinking about them but by putting these steps into practice which is why the third step is focusing on scheduling so to do this you would need to think about when in my life is it realistic to do the things to do the actions and activities that I've decided upon think about you know you can think about your following week and think about the existing commitments you've already got, whether that's work, meeting up with other people, classes, think about all your existing commitments. And outside of that time, when are you able to schedule the activities and actions that you have recognised will help you to live in line with your values? And we want to be as specific as possible. So thinking about your time very, very clearly, getting out your diary and thinking, okay, For example, say I have um, recognised an an action or activity to go for a 30-minute run. If I want a chance of doing it, it's going to really benefit me to plan in advance when exactly I'm going to have time to fit that run in and to make sure that I've got all the things that I need to be able to do that. So say I I did school drop-off at 9 o'clock and I had my first meeting at 1030 then I could think, okay, if I wear my running stuff to school, then I've got my half an hour then to get my run in before getting home to change in time for my meeting. So it really is as specific as finding that exact time and planning that exact time in your day or in your week when you can fit in that activity or, um, or action. So hopefully after scheduling, that will give you a plan for this following week. 
a plan that will help you to live in line with your values, to do the things that will help you to live that life that you want to live, be that parent that you want to be. And when you carry out any of these activities, you can check in with yourself how effective it's been, how much it's helped you. So you can check in with yourself before and after carrying out any of these activities and see what difference it's made to how you feel. And if it's helped you, then you can reschedule it again for a future time. And if it hasn't helped you, then you can go back to step two and think about whether those actions and activities that you identified really do help you to live in line with your values, or maybe you need to tweak them a little bit. A lot of us have been programmed to think that we have to be all things to all people, that we have to be a successful at work and a perfect parent, that it's selfish or selfish or self-centered to put our needs first, or that making such small changes aren't going to make any difference. It's just putting a sticking plaster on a greater problem. But What we do has such a massive impact on how we feel and what we think. There's a cyclical relationship between our thoughts, our feelings and our behaviours. So whilst it's true that what we think and how we believe impacts on how we feel and how we feel impacts on what we do, what we do also impacts on how we think and the beliefs that we hold. And that's the case whether it's a positive pattern or a negative pattern. So if we want to change the way that we feel, if we want to change the things that we do, or if we want to change the way that we think about things, we can start by changing what we do. And that will reap the benefits of that. So when we live in line with our values, it not only will change how we feel, how we feel about ourselves, but also change how we feel about our lives. So it really is as simple as these three steps. It's not easy to identify our values and it's not easy to put them into practice especially when we're so busy and we're juggling so many responsibilities but by scheduling our time in this way then it does help us to find the time that we need for ourselves and find the time we need to do all the things that we want to be able to do and at the same time to do less of the things that don't serve us. So this is just the start, it's just an introduction into a method that you can use a way of having a framework that you can use that will help you to come back to yourself time and time again to check in with what's really important to you and how you can live your line, live your life in line with what's really important to you. Okay, so step one was recognizing what your values are. Step two was identifying the activities and actions that will help you to live in line with your values. And step three is scheduling and prioritizing that time that you can spend doing those things that are going to help you live in line with your values. If you found these um, exercises helpful, if you found this method helpful, then you are welcome to find out more by joining me on my social media, because I'm going to be posting about this topic for the rest of the month. So you can find me on Facebook, and that is www.facebook.com forward slash conscious and calm and I also run a community which is just for mums and that is a supportive group where I'll be posting every day on this topic as well and that is www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash c and c mums that's the letter c and if you want to dive deeper and get a better idea of how you can use this method I'm going to be running a course at the end of this month And it's going through the whole process, so identifying all of the values that we hold, identifying all of the actions and activities that help us to live in line with those values. And we look a lot more as well at some of the roadblocks that can get in the way of getting the way of us living in line with our values, getting the way of us living that life that we want to live. So if you're interested in that course, you can either do it individually And you can find the details there on my website, which is www.consciousandcalm.com. And I'll be running it in a group format as well, starting on the 28th of September. And that will be in my group, which is www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash C and C mums. So in the group, it's just for mums. 
Um, I'm also going to be online, hopefully, for the rest of this hour. So if you've got any questions at all, please ask. I'm really happy to answer any questions. And I hope that these... Um, and I hope that these steps have given you a little insight into a very practical method that you can use to help you to spend more of your time doing things that are important and enjoyable and less of your time doing things that aren't to help you find that balance and help you feel less stressed and more fulfilled with life and help you be the parent that you want to be. Thank you for joining me here today and I hope to see you again soon.